So today we're gonna to combine Midjourney and Adobe Photoshop's new generative fill feature to show you how you can take Midjourney art to the next level by combining it with Photoshop Beta. I've got this image here. I'm gonna look at ways we can take it to the next level and what I'm gonna start is just showing you, you can actually extend your Midjourney images here really easily. So I'm gonna to go to the crop tool over here and I'm gonna hold down Alt to just drag this out both ways. Drag it out that way. I'm gonna hit tick. So now we have this image with white space all around the cat. Now, if I select too close to the edge, this won't work. I wanna select in a bit. So I'm gonna just select around the cat itself. And I'm gonna to go to select and inverse or control shift I. Hit generative fill, leave it blank and hit generate to see what we get. And you see we've got a few options here. I'm gonna collapse this and use the arrows. Some pretty cool options and mid journey's done a great job of mimicking the style to a degree it's not exact but it's enough that you probably won't even know the difference so now we have this full cat image which i think looks pretty incredible but it doesn't just stop there we can do a, so much with this beyond just extending images i can also grab my lasso tool and i can start to now generate ai art it'll still do a fairly decent job of mimicking the style i'm going to draw around the cat but i'm going to go to generative fill now and type in cat wearing a space suit and I hit generate. So once again, we get a few options. I think this one's probably the best. So you see, it does a pretty good job of mimicking the style to a degree. It does look a little bit mixed up, like it doesn't quite match, but uh, I think for AI art, what we're doing here, it's actually really good. Now you can actually take control of seamless patterns using the generative fill, uh, whether it's mid journey or not. But uh, I've got this image I created in Mid Journey, which didn't, which doesn't tile. I didn't use the tile feature. Uh, also, I preferred the results I got without the tile feature, but I still want this to tile. So what I can actually do is I've got my image. I go to Filter, Other, and then I go to Offset. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go horizontal first, offset that by about 500 pixels because it's about a thousand pixel image. Hit OK. You see, we get this clear line down the middle where it shows the join. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually just going to kind of like grab a strip here like this, hit generative fill, leave it blank, hit generate, and notice how it kind of joins the two up. Now I can cycle through and find the one I think works best. Now it's a little bit fuzzy, it's not the best, but I'm going to go to filter, sharpen, sharpen edges just to bring it to life a bit more. Now, so I've got this and it does kind of loop there, but the reason why I want to do this twice is because if I fill it both ways, it, uh, it may not tile left to right. So what I want to do now is go to my layers panel and I want to just, I'm going to basically highlight both these layers, merge them, merge layers. This time I go to filter, other, offset. I'm going to put this to zero again and make this one about 500. And then I basically repeat the process. I picked the best one again. This one's not bad. And I'm good to go. So now I have a pattern here which will tile endlessly. And I'll go skip ahead for a sec. So now I've got my image here, which which I have also created a separate layer here, which I'll turn on. And you'll notice it seamlessly fills. Now there are a few other things here, like there's it's a bit light at the top, so you might want to make some adjustments. But if you've got a fairly consistent image, you can create these seamless patterns really easily using that process. Another powerful use of generative AI to get things done quickly. And as I mentioned before, we can actually do things, some editing of faces. So if you want to fix a face, I can select both of this girl's eyes here, and I can give her glowing god eyes or something like that. Maybe I decide that's not cool. I want Generate. So now I've been able to give her bright green eyes. If I compare like that. The other thing too is there's a bit of funny little bit of hair coming through here. So once again, I can remove that bit of hair by selecting it, hitting generative fill, generate, leaving it blank. And that's kind of cleared it out of her eye, which is pretty cool. I can even change the color of her lipstick. I can say, I can give her black, lipstick not the best examples but still not bad i can always generate again i think that's probably probably the best one there it's probably that one and then if i want to even add a bit more to it maybe i can add in here something like headband 
So we can actually give her a headband that she wears. So you can see how you can start to do a little bit more with these images. Another cool use is when we get weird things that are cropped off like this with the black bars, which happens in mid-journey sometimes, is if I want to fix that, I can also just do the old select one black bar and the other black bar. I can just select the top and the bottom here, hit generative fill, generate, and fix that issue up. The other problem is he's got way too many swords. So what I can literally do here, select the swords that I don't want, generative fill, generate, and now those swords are gone. So it's a really effective way for me to clean up my images. And if I wanna actually add something in the background, it can be a bit hit and miss, but if I go select subject, it's selected most of the subject. Uh, I'm gonna just, I'm basically going to bring that in a bit. So modify, contract, and bring it in about six pixels, maybe a little bit more, go about 15. So I have a little bit of the edging on there. I can go control shift I, and now I can populate a background. So I go generate fill, Mount Fuji, dark stormy night. I'm gonna say dark cinematic CGI render and hit generate. And I can choose a background to add in there. They're still not necessarily the best, but what I can do is leave that and say, cool, I'm happy with that. And over here, I can do CGI render of Japanese temple at night and I can once again choose the best one yeah, probably the first one uh, but one also one thing I want to do finally is also I'm going to select the background again and I'm going to deselect the mountains and this time I'm going to put generative fill lightning in the sky and hit generate now these look pretty bad but I'm going to leave it the way it is and just go to my layer blends and put it onto screen and I can just blend it like a normal layer. So now I have some lightning, I have my samurai, it all looks good. However, maybe I don't like the backgrounds Adobe has produced. So what I can do instead is actually combine backgrounds. So I have this frog I created in Mid Journey along with this other background here, which I created in Mid Journey, which I think looks pretty cool. So what I wanna do is actually pop this frog in the water. So I'm gonna cover a few different things we can do that'll actually give us the ability to really blend that in nicely. So what I'm actually gonna do once I have this frog selected is go to select subject and I'll select that frog, go down here and I'll create a mask. Now straight up, that actually doesn't look too bad already, but I wanna show you a way you can blend this stuff in pretty well. So what I'm gonna do for the area I wanna blend, I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and I'm gonna draw around the frog, leaving a bit of space around it for Photoshop to kind of process the information. And then I'm gonna control alt click on the mask to cut it out. So this might be command and option in Mac. I'm actually not 100% sure, but I wanna basically hold down control for the selection, alt to negative select. And now I have selected around the actual frog itself. But if I want to blend it, I need to actually get into it a little bit, just a little bit. So I go to select, modify to expand that selection. I'm gonna give it two pixels just for it to cut in slightly. And then I can hit generative fill generate leaving it blank and it has blended it into some degree pretty well around the edges is good down here is better but not great but that's okay because what we want to do now is we're going to actually try and pop this frog in the water so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to grab my lasso tool here i'm going to sort of select around the frog where i kind of think it should be in the water maybe around here and i'm actually going to just kind of select around this now, you can get some difficulty getting it to do what you want, so sometimes it's good to give it uh, give Photoshop a bit of a hint. So I'm gonna go down to the original background image and I'm going to copy, click on the top layer and then paste that water in place. So it, it does look a little bit funny, but you kind of get the idea. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select part of the frog as well as the water underneath because I want it to create a reflection and hit generative fill. I'm just gonna leave it blank, hit generate. And you can see how it's kind of placed the frog in the water. It's given it a reflection. I still have a few options. This one I think is probably the best. So you can see we get this nice image with a reflection. And then of course, I can just look around for things I want to add to the image and just basically have a play with it to bring the image to life. But before I do, the resolution on this image is not great. And where I've been generating because I've generated some larger areas here, it's it's not great. You can see the difference, how it's sharper here and kind of blurrier there. 
What I would actually recommend doing, if I'm happy with this as it is and I want to generate smaller details, is using an AI upscaler. There's some free ones like Upscale Media, or you can actually use Topaz Gigapixel, which is what I'm going to use. So I've upscaled the image with Topaz Gigapixel. Um, I will leave some information in the description at the end of this video if you want to check that out. So I've got something that's nice and high resolution I can work with now. And because the image generation only works with a certain degree of resolution, now I can add in the smaller details. Maybe I want to add some tiny birds on the top of the frog's head. And now I'm going to basically just quickly transform this image by adding in a few bits and pieces. So I've then finished up with this image, which I think is pretty cool, pretty something pretty different. I've also adjusted the color out of it just to give it like a bit of a kind of a, an effect. And that all started with this basic image, popping the frog on there, cutting it out, and then simply adding everything in. So I think it's a pretty awesome tool for creating some excellent digital art and imagery. Combined with an AI upscaler like Topaz or something like that, you then get high resolution imagery you can sell or use really effectively. So uh, don't forget to check that out. If you haven't got a Photoshop or Mid Journey, I'll pop links in the description below. Otherwise, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.